Indian girl alleges forced Christian conversion drove her to suicide. On January 19th, uh, Lavanya, no, I'm not sure how, Lavanya, okay. A 17 year old girl from Tamil Nadu died from her suicide attempt. According to local BJP politicians, her decision to end her life came after an alleged forced conversion to Christianity. Lavanya was a grade 10 student at the Sacred Heart Higher Secondary School. An unverified video shows Lavanya on her deathbed claiming she was abused and forced to clean all the rooms in the St. Michael's girls' home where she was staying. She also mentioned in the video that she was told that if she converted to Christianity, then all of her educational expenses will be taken care of. There are multiple angles that complicate this narrative. Lavanya had previously given a testimony to authorities before her death, which did not mention conversion and instead emphasized being forced into menial labor. There were also reports that she was physically abused by her stepmother and thus preferred life at the girls' school. Finally, it has been revealed that there are other videos taken before her death in which she denies ever being forced to remove her bindi or other Hindu religious symbols. So, the, wait, I did say class 12. I don't know what this person, anyways. Um, so wait, she, this, she, she, she did commit suicide? Like she, she, she did dead? commit suicide, but then there, uh, the, what, this is blown up into a huge story and it's a fight over what her reasons for attempting suicide was. So when it says the Indian girl alleges, she alleged these things she talked about her suicide before she committed suicide so what happened was that she had ingested pesticides um about nine to mm -hmm. ten days before she actually died and so she, she was in the hospital it. for her injuries oh basically my God. yeah oh my God. which are absolutely brutal and i don't want to get into that um and so there was time before she actually died to get statements from her and What's complicating the matter is that there, um, before her death, there were statements given to magistrates or FIRs, first information reports, that were taken where she says that, so she went to a Catholic girl's school and she was from a village. And so, and she stayed at a hostel or a girl's home that was associated um, with the Catholic school. And in the statement that she gave to the authorities, um, she emphasized, like I said, that she was forced to do menial labor, like uh, cleaning the home, cleaning toilets, um, as well as doing like the books or accounting for them. And that this caused her to fall behind in her studies. And, um, uh, and then this was part of the reason that um, inspired her suicide attempt and um, the, it, yeah, the, it, the reasons behind her taking her life. Um, her, there was also a statement taken um, by the police from her parents and, well, her father and stepmother before her death. And all of the statements taken before her death didn't mention anything about forced conversion. There was no mention of conversion. Then 24 hours after she'd actually died, there was this video that was leaked and posted and it really blew up when this local um, uh, local chief of the BJP posted it to his Twitter. And in this video that was leaked, she's talking about how two years prior, the nuns had told her family that if she converted, that they would pay for her expenses and that she would just um, generally get ahead in life and um, all this stuff. So that there, there in, in this video, all of a sudden she was talking about um, forced conversion. And I'm not able to actually understand what she's saying there because I only know English, right? But I did read some transcripts some transcripts of the video and obviously i don't have the ability to actually understand it and see for myself just full disclosure um so these transcripts were talking about how the person who at the time unidentified who was filming this video that suddenly emerged um seemed to be asking her a lot of very leading questions and wanting wanted to get her to identify one of the nuns in particular and seemed like continued to ask her about her specifically. And this girl is in kind of an incoherent state. And um, 
it's some of her answers apparently aren't even very clear to understand, but she seemingly names some that nun. Um, and talks, and that's when she talks about being like kind of having an incentivized to convert two years prior. Um, now the issue is has surrounded this video. So because this statement was not submitted to the police before her death, there's a lot of contention over right now, um, over if this can actually be submitted as evidence to the court. Um, and in the days since, it has now been revealed who took that video. And who took that video and the person talking to her in the video is a local VHP leader. So for those who don't know, the VHP is a Hindu nationalist organization that's very active um, around the country. And so um, this has turned into a huge issue. Um, it's become heavily politicized. Um, there are independent investigations into this incident to see what's happened. And um, the Department of Education has released it, um, initial statements or investigations saying that they have um, no reason to believe that they are ruling out a forced conversion as the reason for this. Um, they Part of the reason why they list that they don't think that this was a forced conversion is that um, there's been 16, um, you know, like standard investigations at the school and found nothing of the sort. Um, the, the students are majority Hindu at the school. And there are some school administrators who say that because they know that the majority of their students are actually non-Christians, they actually don't, according to them, um, you know, give Christian speeches that much. But of course, to me, I'm saying, well, just because your student population is majority Hindu, that doesn't mean necessarily, like one does not equate the other. Just because you have majority Hindus, that doesn't mean that you're not trying to convert people, you know? Um, and um, there, I was right, reading this one report about how a lot of people think that what is the one of the reasons why this became such a, um, a political um, sticking point is because the BJP um, local chief minister who tweeted out this video originally is kind of seen as like the laughing stock in the area. And he's just generally known as politically impotent and a flop. Um, so there were people saying that uh, he was just trying to gain political clout. Again, that's one angle for what it's worth. Um, and now it's become a huge issue with the um, government of Tamil Nadu, like the state government itself versus the national um, body that's for the protection of children's rights. They issued this, the, the, um, this committee on children's rights issued this statement about how the government of Tamil Nadu is refusing to work with them. But then on the other token, people are saying, well, the reason why the government of Tamil Nadu refused to work with them in terms of their committee's special investigation into this is because that they were demanding that this man who used to work for the committee but is now a private citizen and is affiliated with RSS, they were demanding that he is a member of this um, committee or an investigation. And the government is saying, we're not going to allow a private citizen to hold that kind of position within this inquiry. So. There's so much back and forth. And then we get into the level of um, there was, now it's coming forth all these issue, issues that she was having at home. So it's been revealed that previously she's called um, basically like a child protective services hotline on her stepmother. Um, I've read reports that apparently she was abused by her stepmother because she has vitiligo. For those who don't know, it's a skin condition. Um, where parts of your skin is lighter than the others and sometimes it spreads and becomes splotchy. So apparently she would like burn her and the 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 grandmother of this girl reported that she was aware of this these incidents and um, that, uh, what else? Yeah, so there was this issue surrounding her um, abuse that she was facing at home, fact that there are previous reports on this and authorities went to go investigate this at the time, but when they showed up, the girl was always accompanied with her stepmother and suddenly she would deny that anything was happening. 
Um, and the, due to this, there are reports that she actually preferred life at this girls' hostel that was associate, associated with the school. And that oftentimes when other students would go home um, to their families for a break, that she would choose to stay back with, at the school. And that some people are saying that um, she ingested this poison at the time that she did because she was having to go back home to her family for a like a holiday break and that she didn't want to do that um but now it's turned into a um huge political issue where the bjp are accusing you know all the other parties of basically own like just doing anything to try to get the minority vote and abandoning you know their girls um that kind of thing Did that you make more sense? This? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, Kiki thinks this is whole. You want to read this one? Um, RSS slash BJP has politicized this case into oblivion, but now new details have emerged. I have doubts over her stepmother. Um, um, I'm not exactly sure what you mean by this. Like, do you doubt the involvement of her stepmother? Do you? Yeah, I need a little more, a little bit more clarity about what you mean um here oh kiki is saying almost forgot to tell you rss slash v vhp slash bjp goons tried to go to that town and incite communal violence over this death the villagers promptly reported them to the police mm -hmm. there's been a huge there's been a huge like everyone is upset with the police in this case there's a special investigation that's specifically going on into this case um there have been calls from bjp leaders to remove the superintendent of police that's involved with this matter because he's ref um he he said that this isn't a forced conversion situation and so they're trying to get him sacked um there's so much going on in this situation but what's interesting though is okay so i spend a lot of time looking into this story today and what i find most credible about this story so far are claims that she was forced to do menial labor within this institution um out of all the claims that are being made about this i if i I'm inclined to believe that that holds the most credence out of everything I've read that seems the most consistent. And also the warden of this hostel for girls has actually been arrested um, because of these accusations. And she was arrested because that was named originally in the original um, statements made to the police before her death. And this, the statement that was made to the police before her death is seen as her last declaration versus this one that emerged after the fact. And what was really revealing is somehow, and here's where people are saying that the police leaked, the, you know, they're saying that the police leaked this footage. I don't know. So when it was discovered that, identified that the person who recorded these videos of her was this VHP leader, apparently there was not one but four videos that he recorded with her according to a report that i read from a source that i find consistently credible and thorough in their writing and it, amongst these four videos there's only one of the four videos where she talks about conversion amongst the other ones again she's mostly emphasizing having to do this menial labor and two there's a the other one the there was a third or fourth video that i mentioned where she actively denies any attempt to um make her remove a bindi or other like i said religious symbols when repeatedly asked do they make you do this and she like repeatedly denies it all right um it seems like people don't really care about the girl that much I think this is a case of, it seems to be a case of tribalism of pro Hindu, pro Hindu and anti Hindu people just deciding what happened um, based on the, the tribe that they belong to, right? It seems like cases like this in India turns into just like, you don't, whatever the evidence shows, you just pick the side based on what helps your narrative, right? 
So if you're like anti-Hindu or anti-Hindutva or whatever you want to call it, I don't know which one to go with anymore. Um, then like, oh, this is like made up. There was no forced conversion. Um, this is just like, Hindus trying to get at Abrahamic religions and exaggerating what happened. This was like probably the stepmother and the step and the stepmother is just using the forced conversion as a way to get out of her responsibility. But if you're pro Hindu and you're Hindu, like it seems like this is what's happening, right? Then obviously this was a forced case of forced conversion. And this is shows the evil of the Christian church inside of india and that's the narrative you're going to pick all right so i think this is hugely like and at the end of the day what actually doesn't matter is the truth because who gives a crap about that you just have to pick up figure out which side you're on based on your allegiances right and i think this is what blank name is saying as well here blank name is saying what is what is sad is that nobody seems to care about the girl who committed the suicide it is interest group using her death for their own benefit. Exactly. I think that's what's happening. Somebody is mentioning that OP India has written an important article. I don't trust OP India for a second. <laughs> right? Like this is the most biased source of information that you could find. I actually like do go read right wing yeah, sources on a lot of these stories. Wait, and they I was mainly... going to say, Sorry. I wasn't, I wasn't finished. Right. So I don't know. Um, so I'm not like, when I say I don't trust OP India, I'm not saying that we shouldn't go read them. In fact, like the fact that it is a bias source makes us do want to go check them out just to see what the biased narrative is, right? So just because the source is biased, that doesn't mean that we should completely dismiss it. Um, yeah, go on. What do you say? Um, well, what was interesting was when I was reading more right-leaning sources, a lot of them emphasized and seemed fixated more on um, like media analysis, condemning the way that the media is like um, forcibly secularizing this event um, and um, comparing their reaction to this case, mainly in their eyes being, um, you know, ignorant silence versus their outrage in other cases. Um, which I thought was interesting, but I didn't um, find any new information that I found particularly enlightening. So, like I said, what's so unfortunate is that this incident is being used politically um, so severely. And I am more, most inclined to believe that either one, it was an issue with menial labor at the school, or failing that it was an issue at home. Um, and I'm compl particularly compelled to say that because the local government bodies, multiple of them have said, this is an enforced conversion angle. Um, yeah, hold on. Let me get some comments here. So like this person, for example, keeps is constantly swearing at Kiki because Kiki is suggesting that it was the stepmother that was more involved. And this guy was like swearing at Kiki. And I think this person is like on the Hindu side, seems like he's like, basically he say she died because of the Christian conversion agenda, period. Like, again, like this is a person that is so certain, <laughs> just so certain about like, I don't know how you have all this how could you be so certain about something so complicated but that like are you part of the investigation have you like like how <laughs> but you can see how tribal people are about like the, the way that they come up with their conclusions right um somebody saying constantly is trying to uh, okay thank you so much yeah i saw it like i see you mentioned this like a million times but thank you you're saying you're, you're a big fan from india we love well, our fans from support. india we do we some do. of our okay. haters are nice too <laughs> Some of our haters are nice too, yes. BJP doesn't want this to be a, a national issue because they are trying to win Zions in, what is this? Christians. POA? Christians no, I know Goa. what Zions are. Oh, Christians. Okay. That's Christians. an abbreviation okay. for Christians. Okay, okay, okay. Right, <laughs> okay, why can't you just write Christians? Is that hard to write? Like, is how much, <laughs> how much time did you save by writing X? Uh, okay. All right. So this is this guy's the same guy is saying the whole 
uh, of South Tamil Nadu has been taken over by the church conversion agenda. Um, yeah, I feel like you guys, like people like you are taking a problem that is a thing and you guys are exaggerating it, right? Like this is how conspiracy theories are born. Something is a problem, but I think you guys exaggerate what's going on. Uh, Ghost Penny saying, it sounds like the abuse may be bigger factor in her suicide than force of conversion. You know, you just have to uh, ha have a heavy dose of skepticism. Just to, uh, just tell people what we know uh, and not we don't really know. Okay, it's hard to it's hard to it's hard to come up with a definite conclusions, right? Look at this person. Look at this. This guy is like so invested <laughs> in the narrative so invested in the narrative that this must have like the suicide is definitely because of the force conversion look like, like you're an idiot kiki i challenge you on an iq test we'll see who tops like look how invested like guys look at what tribalism this rags me ragsy boy look this is your mind on tribalism you're so invested in accepting everything that makes the your enemies look bad and your side looks good that this is how you react to somebody who disagrees with your conclusion, okay? <laughs> I, you're challenging people to IQ tests because they're looking at a news item and they're coming up with a different conclusion than your what your narrative is. Like, no, just anybody that comes up with the conclusion that this is the maybe the stepmother is more of an influence in the suicide rather than the forced conversion, they're like this. Oh my god, you guys are. This is well. I like. I visually, I like the idea of an IQ test duel. <laughs> I'm gonna duel you on IQ. <laughs> I like that idea. Over over um, this news, like like think about like we're talking about a girl's suicide, okay? And people like don't care about the girl, just care about like who could they frame over this, and they're challenging each other over IQ, IQ tests because of like like oh my god. All right, so by the way, this this thing uh, you're saying BGP owns the media. Um, depends on what you mean by the media, right? If you're talking about the news media, yes, that's like overly taken over by the Hindu nationalists, right? In India, but if you buy media, you mean Bollywood, that's more leftist, right? In India, and that's what the BGP is trying to now dominate, right? Because they see it as like a very powerful force. But the Bo Bollywood is also part of media, and that's not taken yet been taken over by G BJP, but yeah, yeah, I don't know. I think the final things I want to say is like, um, I tried really hard to get all the different angles of this case, the way it developed over time, like over the past week alone is quite complicated. So um, I tried to pre present this in the best um, uh, it totalistic, but um, con as concise as possible. Um, and I'm also not certain when it comes to this, when I would go look at one source and one story and compare it to another, um, I continually had more questions and um, not enough answers. Um, so I don't, I'm, I'm not um, staking my claim on any one position here. Um, there's has to be a lot more investigation that goes into this matter. But regardless of what the truth is, I think everyone can agree that this is being used for political expediency. And Finally, if this actually is a case of legitimate forced conversion, um, that's really sad. And that does need to be addressed because no one should be abused or disincentivized um, from their education uh, because of their faith. So. Okay, the one last comment. This is so funny. I mean, actually, no, it's not funny. But anyways, this so like so. Hindutva is saying, Hindus, please teach your kids about the evil Abrahamic cult. Uh, make them aware about conversion and love jihad. Mostly talk to your girl kid regularly. This is the atmosphere that um, is being created in India, right? That everybody is turning on each other, right? Everybody is now like becoming suspicious of each other. Like this is like. If this continues, like, you know, the like guys, like, I don't want to do the slippery slow fallacy, okay? So I'm not saying this is I think likely. But this a little bit hyperbolic. I don't think this is everyone. I don't think this is everywhere because my experiences or what well, my you're, friends. You're putting me, words right? in my mouth. No, you, you're putting you words used in my absolutist mouth. language. No, I said, like, there's a trend, okay? 
there's a trend that is growing in India. Okay. So it's not, it hasn't taken over. Okay. But people are, that's why I stopped and I said, I don't want to do a slippery slope fallacy. I don't want to say this is going to lead into like an internal civil war or something. Okay. But even if there's a low chance of it growing to that extent, even if there's a 1% chance, that's 1% too many. Do you know what I mean? Like we have seen in history, again, I don't want to say because we have seen in history, therefore it's going to happen here exactly the same way. It might not. Okay. But given how many times language like this has turned into very devastating internal conflict. Okay. You have to be worried. Okay. I'm not saying it's going to happen for sure. Okay. It's even very, you know, but we had like, we had like, like you can't blame me for like worry about this. We had genocide experts were giving us this warning, okay? That just that what's happening in India could le lead into like an internal civil war, right? We saw this happening in Rwanda, right? We saw this happening um, in you know former Czechoslovakia, right? We saw this happening, you know, in 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 Germany, right? But this otherizing people, like like everybody looking at. You know, everybody Abrahamic, like you're like taking stories like this, and now they, you know, Hindutva, you're generalizing an entire group of people, okay? And then they go in return, they're going to be fearing Hindus, okay? Again, we're not generalizing, but if they have, if the Abrahamic people in India have bad experiences with some Hindus, they're going to be generalizing all of Hindus, and they're going to constantly be suspicious of all of Hindus and worried about getting targeted by all of Hindus, right? And in the same way, you know, a lot of Hindus, even though they're not all of Hindus, you know, when they are looking at the actions of some Christians and some Muslims and otherizing all people from Abrahamic religions as potentially toxic, right? Especially when it comes to, you know, they're mixing two very, uh, two tools that are, is used usually in, the, in making people more tribal is like they're coming after our children and they're coming after our women. Okay, this is cultish, like you Hindu Hindu. So you're using the, you're calling Abrahamic uh, people evil Abrahamic cults, but you're using cultish tactics in making people worried about this evil other, right? So especially when you mix it to both of them together by saying female children, you know what I mean, like both women and children, the, the language that almost all right far right leaning groups use as a way to create fear of these this evil enemy right coming after our children coming after our children right and again you're referring to things like love jihad which is an absolute proven conspiracy theory that is like if you believe that that's happening you have lost your mind okay like everything like and these are the same people that are like oh i have done my research done my research if you have come to the conclusion that love jihad is a thing right anything other than a method to demonize the entire Muslim population in India, then you have fallen in that you have lost the ability to objectively analyze what's going on in India, in your own country. Right? So you're being used. You're part of your, you're being used by this hate mob and you're part of, you know, you're, you're just a tool for, for politicians to, constantly use hate as a way for them to increase their relevancy and their power you're 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 a small little insignificant pathetic little tool in pe people more powerful than you for their own gains and you're being used and you don't even know it and you're spreading hate okay imagine like dying and your contribution to the world has been spreading more hate spreading people turning people against each other that has been your and to no benefit of your own you made the world a worse place in, and, and in, just to make some politicians power, uh, stay in power longer. That's, that's what your, and your legacy is going to be. Like, be, be worried about the contributions you're making to this world. Do you want to be that? And it's amazing that you're calling other people evil where you're being used, you're becoming a tool for evil. Anyways, that's my rant. Damn. Yeah. Well, I good rant. Um, quickly, Bengali Hindu was saying many ordinary Hindus have gotten shifted towards the extreme right because of these random abusings of Hindus by the left. Um, 
What I will say is that it is very important. I agree how the left does handle these issues um, because uh, as someone who is on the left, I'd want to see the efforts of the left succeed. But um, uh, the leftist tendency to ignore the concerns of the quote unquote majority um, can be a huge disservice to what they want to accomplish politically. Um, and blank name is saying in response to what Armin was saying. In Bangladesh, Islamist fascists also use the exact same language against Hindu minority. It goes to show how similar they are in their hate. So. They're the mirror mirror image of each other. It's amazing. At least in their, in their propaganda tactics, at least in that regard, they're mirror images of each other. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and uh, thank you. Ego was saying very wise words. Thank you for being a voice of reason. No, oh, thank you. Thank you. Also, Igor FTCP gave us a $50 super chat on the Persian channel last night. So thank you for that. You're muted. You said? I said that's so nice. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for because we're not monetized here, but we're monetized so there. So thank you for that. All right. Um, okay. Let's go to and also thank you so much to Zena for like all this detail. Like holy crap. <laughs> like, you know, I can you know, guys, I don't trust I <laughs> I trust Susanna uh, over anything, any news we're getting from pe biased people from India telling us like, yeah, you know, Susanna is like the unbiased source that is like looking at this as objectively as, as she can. So thank you for that, Susanna. Well, thank you. I, uh, especially covering this news, this is such a, um, I don't even like such a, such a fiery crucible i was like i gotta make sure i know all the ankles on this one <laughs> atheist republic needs your help we have been the target of many legal attacks by hindu nationalists ever since our founder armin Abhabi blasphemed against hindu deities we have retained legal counsel to help us defend our access to our community in india we have started a fundraiser that will help us afford to tackle many legal issues including judicial harassment and censorship Whatever you can contribute will go a long ways in helping us in this fight. Link in the description below.